Welcome back everybody. I just went to my first estate sale of the year. They had to clear the property because the city bought it and they had like 10 days to get everything gone and they had about three lifetimes worth of worth of items jammed in about six stalls worth of garage. Um, a lot of it was just like building supplies and it looked like the person got whatever free things they could get <laughs> when, when, when he saw them on the side of the road or, or whatever it may be. But uh, so everything on this table it pretty much was a dollar per item. Um, it, that's kind of what it comes out to when it, I think it was just like, you know, give me 20 bucks, take it all type of thing. So this is what I found. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy, but a few, a few things I, I just grabbed. Um, one is this lakeside sawtooth set. Uh, I, I see no other markings on it. I, I think I've heard of the lakeside name before, but, uh, I don't see anything that says like made in the USA or anything like that but grab that i grabbed this i believe you call it a drill index um this one here well it does say made in the usa on this end i believe it has an underscore nine with a six six nine three number and it doesn't say craftsman anywhere on it but usually craftsman had the underscore nine i don't i don't know if you can pick that up i don't know if it's focusing on that but pick that up, basically a dollar. Everything is. I wasn't a hundred percent sure what this was. I think it has something to do with chainsaw, you know, like chain sharpening. I was gonna do some research on it. Don't know that. Uh, don't know that I'll ever use it, but <laughs> it looks kind of cool. So I just threw it in my pile. I grabbed this. Well, I guess I'd call it a table saw miter, but you could use it on a few different items, bandsaw and so on. Now it says Shopmaster on it. I don't know if Shopmaster was the brand of table saw or if the brand of fence that they were using or, or what it was. Looks like it does have a number in the bottom here. Looks like TA130F, whatever that may be. But you know how you come across a number of tools that don't seem to have the, the miter guide, so... If it fits in the slot that I have for a few of my saws, you know, great. If not, I'll get rid of it. But for a dollar, can't pass it up. This person had a bunch of, uh, well, not a, I shouldn't say a bunch. I grabbed three or four items. Older Craftsman uh, attachments. This one is a, a molding and dado guard for a, a radial arm saw. Um, don't know that's all here, but, you know, again, it's just for a dollar, give it a shot. If it's all there, it is. If it's not, it's not. No big deal. The box is kind of cool if you just want to put something up on a shelf. And then had a few router attachments. Well, not maybe attachments, but things you use a router. Here's a router template. Uh, looks like 25182. So that has all the letters and probably numbers in it. It looked to me like it had probably never been used before. This looks like the piece you, you bolt on as your guide. And then in here would be the, the letters and numbers and, you know, they, they look like brand new, like they're all there. And so, again, when, when, the, when the items cost a dollar, <laughs> you just grab them and worry about it later. I grabbed a few tin pans. These are always good if you're taking stuff apart and want a little... Thing to hold all your pieces or if you're you're cleaning something you want it to catch your chemicals so always good to have a handful of those and two more router uh, attachments this is a router bit sharpening attachment i've never heard of that before i again don't know if it's all there but it looked like it was never used i mean it doesn't even have any dust or dirt on it so I'll look at it closer and see if I think it's all there a different day. I mean, the back, the box is all tore up, but it doesn't look like it's ever really been run. And the final piece for the router was a edge guide and contour finger. That's, I can't quite tell the, the model number on that one. And there's that one. I grabbed this Weller 
soldering station. Now, the ones I've seen online, I, I, I haven't seen them with this basket or whatever you'd like to call it. It doesn't look like it's homemade. It looks like it's made for this, but I can't find another one that has this. So may, maybe it's homemade, but it was very well done if it was. So just a, a soldering iron. I picked up this little three-piece set of uh, braking engine cylinder home set, KD tools. Uh, look like basically they're brand new or have a lot of life left in them. Anyways, don't know that I'll use these, but you never know. One day I might be restoring something that has a small cylinder of some sort that just needs to be honed out. So added those to the pile. I uh, picked up two partial sets of these uh, dado blades with the little um, profiles, the, the different profiles they come with. I mean, they're not complete by any means. Um, they're they're obviously not complete. I probably sell these both together on eBay for somebody that's uh, needing a, a center, uh, either one of these centers. Or maybe they need a couple of the bits. The bits seem to be in pretty good shape. Picked up this little German wrench. Um, I don't know if the proper way to pronounce it is has it or has it. But it's a little 8, eight by 13 millimeter. Uh, I saw these hanging on just on the wall. There was four of them. Uh, I, I believe they're just you know wood panel clamps for... And you're clamping up a few pieces at once. Um, I thought they were cool. They had a cool look to them. I like the like water faucet type of knob on the end there. And they had four of them. And you know, I put them in the pile. And basically they were a dollar each. Now this one I did research when I got home. Because I did see a name on it. I don't know if you can pick that up. It says the CTCO. That is the Cincinnati Tool Company. Now, I went and looked at sold comps on eBay, and these were selling in the neighborhood of $60 to $100 a pair. And if they were the longer ones, like the 48 inches, those were going for like $150 on up. So, no idea when I bought them. I will probably sell a pair and probably keep a pair just to even put on the wall. Although, I might use them one day. I do woodworking. Uh, I do have clamps already, but... You know, you can never have too many, obviously. So I got four of those. Then I saw these guys. This one says Crane Brothers, manufactured in Chicago. Now, the Crane Brothers were known for uh, steam engines, uh, pipes, gas fittings, that sort of manufacturing. I believe they still survive today. And I'm not 100% sure what this is. I believe it's some sort of thread cutter or, um, well, I mean, it would. I, I imagine it would hold some sort of die and cut threads on a pipe or a very big bolt. <laughs> but I, I just thought it looked cool. I thought, you know, basically at a dollar per item, I'm just going to throw it on the pile. And nothing else, I'll just hang it on the wall. And I got a second one. This one says, read out of Erie, Pennsylvania. So you can pick that up. Reed Manufacturing. This one, basically the same, same exact thing, just made by a different company. It's missing the one screw on this side, but no big deal. But I just thought they were cool, so grabbed them. Last thing I saw was this jack. I thought, well, might be a cool thing to restore one day. Uh, just wall hanger whatever but just pretty cool it kind of has like a ratchet on here where i think to go up it grabs this way so pretty cool and then to reverse it you just flip that guy over go the other way with it so you know not like i'm going to use it <laughs> on, on my car but uh pretty cool this one says pratt I don't know if you can read that, but it's Pratt, Chicago. And then it looks like maybe the model number is SJ330C. So just overall, some pretty cool looking items. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.